Nicholas, 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 look at the machine we're in front of. I am sure you remember. Does the audience remember when you and I tried to squeeze this type of this machine? It wasn't that difficult on this one. We had another machine here that was pretty tough to get into. That one was way yeah, more difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah especially me. So. This one, a bit bigger, yeah. but we remember that, right? And you talked about, I asked you about the slanted bed, and why was it slanted? Because it looks cool. Because it looks cool. Serves no purpose other than looking <laughs> cool, you know? <laughs> Which obviously it does, but that was the conversation. And then the other part is uh, that we were running apart at that time, but we talked about getting over to Italy and filming at the factory. Are oh, we gonna make yep. that happen? Promac, we're coming to see you. Promac, oh. we are coming to see you. <laughs> so let's get into the details of this machine. We do have a part running now. Let's reiterate some of what we spoke about before because it was in theory before, yep. because we climbed in the machine that wasn't a part running. Let's talk about what we're doing here and not just being sexy with a slanted bed <laughs> or cool with a slanted bed. What does it all bring to the Italian to the to the table with the Italian style of engineering? So one of the unique things, um, obviously the slanted bed, so you can put a very very tall job on the machine and run it down the hill. Um, another feature that's really cool, which we actually used on this part, is um, you can run it up the hill and then you can bring the uh, head down below the surface of the table. And we did some deep hole drilling. We actually you, you can't tell because it's not doing it right now. We poked some 22 inch deep holes on this machine. So this mold that's sitting in here, we roughed it, we semied it, we finished it, and we did the deep hole drilling all in one setup. So, um, completely. I gotta be honest, man. You know I spend a lot of time traveling. I get to talk about machines a lot as well. I don't see slanted beds all the time, but the technology seems incredible and yeah. something that we should look at a bit more profoundly when considering some of the parts we're manufacturing because it does do exactly what you just said. Maybe more rigidity, we go up the hill, right? Exactly, yep. It, and it, it does a good job. It's a pretty small footprint for the capacity. We can swing a 1600 millimeter part in this machine. So it acts a lot bigger than it actually is with that slant bed. And one, another thing is too, you got your Y axis overhead and the W axis below it. They're not right on top of each other. They're offset by 60%. So if you've got a part that's bigger than your Y axis travel, it doesn't matter. Just move your W axis and now you just gained that much more in your Y axis. So pretty dang unique machine. Nick, if, I, if, if memory serves me correctly, this is actually their smallest or one of their smallest models as well, right? Yes, absolutely, yeah. So this is a uh, essentially a 40 inch table machine. We have a couple machines in this size. We have one machine model smaller than this and then 90% of what they do is bigger than this. So four meters, six meter, eight meter, 30 meter, five meters wide, three meters of vertical. It doesn't matter. These guys will build within reason just about anything you want. And actually, those have, those have been even more popular. We've sold more of the big machines than we have of these small machines. Well, now, yeah, now I'm curious as to why that is, but we can't talk and talk and talk like we always do because I also have other questions I want to get into. Yeah. Based on the size of the machines, what I'm going to ask about in just a minute is the industries where people watching right now and go, well, I'm learning about Promac for the first time and I want to know more about it based on these details. So what industries might be best of service? But before we get into that, I got to talk about precision. When we get into these bigger machines, when we get into the reach that they have to go through, the envelope size of these bigger machines, do I have that quality and precision that I need for some parts that are being run inside of here? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, these machines are fully capable of having volumetric compensation tables put in them. So basically, you can dial every micron of every stroke of, you know, uh, every inch of travel out of this anywhere. Um, and we can, we can do comp tables that are 10 gig big with 250,000 points. It, it really doesn't matter. That's kind of the power of the height nine control. Um, another thing is too, it's an extremely rigid machine, and being a baby gantry, uh, physics are in your favor with this machine, where a lot of machines you get out there and you may have a big knuckle that's hanging way out there. Uh, you know, this thing, you, and, and especially too, you can run the job up the hill to tighten up and shorten up that Z-axis, so um, accuracy is no problem. Most people that use these machines, Promac has done a really, really good job over the years of going after the mold making world. Um, so people cut and steal, um, you know, just molds for anything and everything. Um, a really, really majorly untapped market, which we've been tapping into a lot, I would say probably 50% of our activity over the last couple of years has been aerospace. Right. Um, you know, I mean, there's absolutely nothing that you can't do in the aerospace world with this style of machine. But in fact, actually, oftentimes, some of the aerospace stuff is less critical tolerances, believe it or not, and it's big flimsy stuff, you know? If you can rough semi and finish a, a, you know, a hardened steel component, we can cut a nice aluminum stringer all day long. 
If you can do mode and die, you can for sure do aerospace. Exactly. 99% of the time. Exactly. Also, I don't like to focus on the, the flexible, bendy, lack of tolerance because I'm on planes all the time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. let's not yeah, talk yeah. about We don't want to talk about that too much. Yeah. <laughs> so as we're describing this, I also think about, well, we've talked about this as Italian. We talked about maybe going over to Italy. Something that I know is important to you, we reiterate in many of the videos that we create together, is your people on the ground, your relationships. As I look around this facility right now and I see hundreds of people walking around because they like you, because they like Maryfield, because they like your service, your support. When yeah. I think of working overseas sometimes, I think, oh man, am I going to have to wait on some of that stuff? But you guys are built to support everyone that you uh, work with which certainly includes Promac as well would you like to touch on that relationship with Promac yourselves and the customers yeah I mean that's uh, that's a really really good point um, in my opinion absolutely nothing matters more than the relationship you know you might have uh, the greatest machine out there you might have the better mousetrap um, you know but it does it matter if that machine goes down and you don't, you don't know who to call if you have a team that doesn't stand behind it, if you have to wait weeks on end for simple, simple, uh, you know, components or, or whatever it is. Um, so the relationship with Promac, you know, th these guys are a very, very small company. They build less than 100 machines a year. Um, but it's personal for them. Every single machine is a personal relationship, you know, which to me, and, and it's not just Promac. I mean, it's it's Takumi, it's Eurotech, it's OEA. Everybody in this building we have a phenomenal relationship with, and we can get right up to the decision makers. You don't have to go through 37 layers of people that are inserted on purpose because they don't want you to get to the man. You know, I could have Lucho Carrero, the founder of Promac, on the phone in 30 seconds from now. So, you know, it's, it's pretty cool when you know that you got the guy that designed it that you know, you, you can reach him in a, a very quick amount of time and he genuinely cares about taking care of the problem. So, Nick, I like that very much. The last thing I'm gonna say before we step off of this camera, because you and I have a lot to do and I know people are just yeah. trying to pull you off camera to talk <laughs> about your machines. You're a very yeah. busy man today. Have you seen the movie Ghostbusters? I have. And do you know the part, who you gonna call? <laughs> who you gonna call? Mary Field! Woo <laughs> yeah! <laughs>